Right, guys, welcome back to another video. We're in uh, Lake District, um, or specifically a car park in uh, Windermere. Lake Windermere is just over there. I'm planning on doing a short hour, because that's all i got time for. It's taken a six and a half hours journey time to get up here today. I've forgotten my socks. I've got, I've got race socks, but I haven't got, like, normal socks, so... Charlie said I can get away with it. Yeah, because they're black. <laughs> I'm gonna see you on the bike in a second, and then, uh, and then we'll see you tomorrow for the main event. How lush is that out there? Oh, oh, I'm gonna enjoy this tomorrow. Oh, I'm gonna enjoy this tomorrow. <laughs> it is amazing. I'm only at the bottom slopes as well. I've just done a two minute opener effort, 420 watts, which is basically race pace tomorrow. And I just wanted to see, I'll compare on the comparison to our Strava later, like where I compare to the faster other times in terms of how I pace that first two minutes. I'm doing about 200 watts right now and about 50 RPM and I'm barely moving. <laughs> I intend to ride to the top of the struggle now, Kirkstone Pass, descend Kirkstone Pass from the main road and that'll be, that'll be me done for the hour. There's so much going on on this climb, it's like, like nice things to look at like stony walls and the autumn leaves and the mist. I know, I shouldn't be looking at this stuff, should I? I should be fully in the zone. <laughs> what I'm looking for on this climb is obviously the steep bit and the shallow bit. Making YouTube content is one thing. On race day, I don't want to have my mind there and trying to perform at, you know, the best level possible. And for me, is, is the number one thing. I always try and do this the day before. Give you that insight, give you that knowledge but there is a flat section coming up and so I want to do that at race pace in this ride see what effect the wattages want to do 300 or 350 watts which actually will allow me plenty of recovery on this flat section before the last bit it's all part of that process of you getting faster and better and more knowledgeable when it comes to utilizing your own effort can you see that behind me that is the lake Lake Windermere right at the bottom Almost looks like the road goes into it. Okay, we made it to the top. I had to stop for a quick selfie in front of the sign, the struggle sign. Uh, I wonder if it's gonna be like this tomorrow. If it is, I'm gonna wear a helmet because there's some like wild sheep things on the climb. I don't actually wanna hit them at like 30 mile an hour on that flat bit. So I may sacrifice a little bit of weight to save my, my head. Okay, accommodation for the night. We're staying at the Swan Inn in Grasmere, I think. Uh, all I know is, right, that it is a maze in there, but it's a really nice place. And the views are extraordinary. So the breakfast was actually fairly small. Um, uh, and given that we're, I don't know, like four hours away from the start, but two slices of toast, eggs, yogurt, cereal. It's always a balancing act because you never want to eat too much. I mean, that, that that's the biggest thing to take away. Never eat too much because you can't undo that. If you eat too little, you can always top up. So, so that, that's, this is the start of the struggle climb and time for a stat attack. So this climb, the struggle, is 4.6 kilometers long. Average gradient of 8%, maximum gradient 20%, but that's disputed. Uh, the last bit where it kicks up again apparently is steeper. It's more like 25%. Uh, I'm intrigued as to know like how traction's gonna be on a climb like this when it's greasy. Okay, so I've broken it down into three segments this climb, much like Hato when I won the national championships. 2.9k is gonna be my first finish line. That's gonna be about three quarters of the way up the climb. 
Then there's going to be 1.1k of flat section and then a 600 meter wall at the end which gets to like 20%. So the idea is, time wise, I'm going to pretty much bury myself for eight and a half minutes to get to that flatter section. I'm going to make a lot of time there, a lot of time is going to be gained there. Then two minutes-ish on this kind of flat undulating section which probably won't be able to be taken at full speed anyway because of the wet road. And then the final bit is going to be two and a half minutes full gas. So that's how I'm going to pace it. Just need to see if it works. This is Ambleside. I've probably already said that a million times, but just thought I'd show you a bit of it. It just looks like Lake District. It's very nice, isn't it? It's like the flying fleece. Wood fire pizza place. Nice. Okay, so um, let's talk about equipment. So the bike is set up uh, much like I rode it yesterday, to be honest. I was going to put my super slick, lightweight clincher tyres on, but given the conditions, I'm not going to do that now. 80 psi, 90 psi in the tyres, just so I get a bit more grip, even though I probably won't be able to saddle at any point on this climb, maybe the last couple of hundred metres. I'm going to run a backlight, I'm taking this one off and I'm going to run a very small backlight there which is compulsory. Um, the other thing, the thing that isn't compulsory is a helmet um, but I am going to wear one. Uh, I feel like it'll give me a bit more confidence to, to give it full beans really. And that's about it, the only other thing I've got here is I've got my Wahoo Bolt rather than uh, the Roam, saves a tiny bit of weight, it's nothing. Um, but I am going to run my GoPro to hopefully get some footage for the organisation and, um, well, for myself, and it, for this video. So that's going to be about it. I don't think there's anything else left to say other than we need to do a warm-up, which is important because of the drive yesterday. And it's important that um, I drink my coffee now because I have about two hours to go. This is the first hill climb you've been to now with me, isn't it? This year. Right, it's worth mentioning that this event today is a charity event. Um, so part of our entry fees go towards um, the Great North Air Ambulance. And also, they've done a cracking job, the organisation, um, of not only shutting the road, but there's loads of signs, there's loads of marshals. And uh, from what I've gathered, there is poor visibility up the climb at the minute. Um, but hopefully, there'll be so many people there, marshals and people with cowbells, I've seen on Instagram. Uh, then I'll be able to I'll be able to find my way up there, like, with my eyes closed because of the noise. <laughs> Actually, the event is run entirely in support of the Great North Air Ambulance. 100% of all entry fees go right to the charity. Well, that's good. That's really good. So the start isn't where I said it was. <laughs> Typical. Um, we're actually starting like, we're skipping like the first 400, 300 meters of the climb. Oh, okay. What's going on? Organisers. Should be the last one, right? I don't know if he's ever taken anything. Oh, yeah, he probably has.
Oh my word. Just finished. Check out this view, guys. This was new half an hour ago. I don't know where it's come from. Look at that. That's where we came up, that road there. Oh my word. Look at the tailwind though. <laughs> <laughs> At the end of every race that Charlie comes to, we need to do a Charlie-like debrief. Um, so, tell me, how did, what happened, like, describe that first 100 metres where, where I came past you and you were filming. Well, you were the only one in the saddle, like everybody else was at the saddle. I mean, it was steep. It was steep. It's just typical of me to, and like... You, ju you just looked like... <laughs> like you normally do. You don't you didn't look like you were suffering. My attitude is it's the same with the time trial. If you start a time trial and you do like five hundred watts, six hundred watts for the first minute, mm. which granted I can barely do anyway. What's happening is you're doing five hundred watts. You're not actually it doesn't mean you're going well, it just means you're doing five hundred watts. Down to a down to a fine art, down to a T. Where I can just start these longer hill climbs. And I just gradually ride myself into them because I know mm. it's not one in the first like minute, maybe. Mm. Thanks for thanks for your deep brief. <laughs> thanks for your deep brief and input. You didn't see the rest of the climb, but you saw the first couple of minutes. I chased steps. you up it. Oh yeah, you ran after me. I ran after you off that first bend. I was trying to stabilise the camera. To be fair, I wasn't going that fast, there, was I? So. <laughs> no, but it was still hard, like running after you. Jeez. Should have had the GoPro strapped to your head. Yeah, that would have been better. I'm not sure what time I did, so I'm gonna like have a look at Strava. I know Strava's not like massively accurate, but what the... Oh my word. I have taken a KOM from Rowan Dennis. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I mean, I had a tailwind and everything, and he did it at the end of stage of the Tour Britain. But saying that, you know, these people are professionals. Like, they're supposed to perform just as well at the end of a race as they do at the start of a race. So I'm not going to take much from that. But anyway, I have won the event and taken KOM from Rowan Dennis. <laughs> the, the climb was just perfect for me. 413 watts, I think, normalised. That's obviously taken into consideration that flatter section for 12 minutes-ish. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a like. And we're gonna get in the car now and do a five and a half hour drive back to South Wales, but it is what it is. See you in the next one.